The guest is uh, Dr. Juarez, uh, Paul Juarez from um, Harry Medical College, and we're talking about what we earlier described as youth violence and intentional homicides or intentional injuries. And I think we've uh, more than less, more than anything, brought that topic from simply youth violence to talk about uh, societal violence in a real sense, doctor. And so let's continue our discussion here, doctor. Well, one of the things that I've learned to really appreciate is that dealing with violence, youth violence in particular, mm -hmm. uh, from, a, again, a health care perspective, mm -hmm. we use the public health model mm -hmm. and a public health approach. And it, it, it provides a way for, and that's why it's called uh, uh, intentional injuries mm -hmm. rather than just violence, mm -hmm. uh, is that we can understand that the outcome often results in an injury, mm -hmm. and that injury was intentionally inflicted. And, mm -hmm. and then using the public health approach, we, we try to break it down to look at what were the causes of this. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those causes may be personal, uh, mm -hmm. behavioral aspects. Mm -hmm. Somebody was, again, it could have been, uh, again, got into a fight, they mm -hmm. were angry, or there was a bad, uh, mm -hmm. cr it was a crime or something involved. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we need to look at the event, and you have a victim and, and a perpetrator. But mm -hmm. you can look at the individual characteristics of what is it about those individuals that led to this mm -hmm. uh, event. Uh, but you can also then, so we, we, it's called the uh, agent-host uh, environment model. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, the host is the individual, either the victim or the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. The agent is the mechanism of injury. Mm -hmm. How did the, the actual injury occur? Mm -hmm. Was it a, a knife? Yeah, was it a blunt instrument? Mm -hmm. Was a gunshot yeah, wound? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then so you can isolate Very it and good. look at, mm -hmm. is there something you could do to target that mm -hmm. to prevent the, uh, the injury mm -hmm. from having occurred? And then the, the third component is the environment. And mm -hmm. how do you look at environment? Either mm -hmm. the physical environment, mm -hmm. is it in a, you know, an area that you know, has, uh, uh, you know, there's no lighting and it's a dark mm -hmm. area where people can congregate and you get drug selling or, or just uh, makes it more likely for uh, crime to occur, mm -hmm. somebody getting mugged, et cetera. Or is it a park? Is what, what is it about the physical mm -hmm. environment? Is there something about the social environment mm -hmm. as well? So it's this combination of breaking it down and looking at the different aspects mm -hmm. of intentional injuries mm -hmm. to see, is there some way we can prevent it from occurring? Mm -hmm. And so that's been my focus, is really looking at prevention. Very good. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that uh, we, uh, I've been fortunate, I've got a, a grant funded from the Centers for Disease Control mm -hmm. and Prevention mm -hmm. uh, to really address this problem of youth mm -hmm. violence and intentional mm -hmm. injury. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, one of the things that we've been able to do is establish, uh, we have several research projects mm -hmm. and I've got collaborators both here from Tennessee State mm -hmm. and Vanderbilt that are working with me Good. on that. Yeah. We have mm -hmm. some things going on in the school, some things in the community mm -hmm. as well. Good. But one of the real I th things that I'm excited about is we also established a community coalition. Mm -hmm. It's called the Nashville Community Coalition for Youth Safety. Good. And we have really been able to engage uh, the public sector. We've got the academic community. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of community organizations mm -hmm. and just individuals who are interested and wanted to be part of this involved. Mm -hmm. We have over 300 people now. Good. And and it's something that we've broken. We've actually we've had some strategic planning, and we've had youth. We get mm -hmm. youth involved in helping us mm -hmm. to see their perspective. We mm -hmm. think it's very important Good. to have mm -hmm. the youth voice uh, in in mm -hmm. you know in the mix. Uh, and so they've helped us guide our uh, in terms of approach. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we that, that's come out of the discussions that mm -hmm. we've had is we've act we have three work groups. One that focuses on youth safety, mm -hmm. a second one that focuses on mentoring or caring adults, mm -hmm. and a third one that focuses on job training and work opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so we're using those three areas mm -hmm. to really to prevent youth violence. Mm -hmm. And they all have different, uh, you know, they're all important. Youth violence has multiple causes, mm -hmm. and so we need to have multiple interventions. But, mm -hmm. you know, getting the community involved is a really important mm -hmm. part of this. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, 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 a societal kind of thing that we can do Absolutely. Uh, other than and I, I think that this would be less expensive in terms of what we're trying to do is by just taking this drug mm -hmm. gang situation mm -hmm. being the cost of all everything mm -hmm. and etc speak to that about okay. uh, how expensive well, it is again to for, to from uh, to incarcerate uh, mm. someone on for a year I think the cost is I, I think it's forty to fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars now which is more is about the same as college tuition mm -hmm. uh, you know so if we can uh, prevent the, you know, somebody from being incarcerated, mm -hmm. you know, for violence. Uh, you know, and, and we could pay for the college mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. college education. Mm -hmm. Now, 
again, we have to get them to that point. So mm -hmm. we have, that's why it's a very important to work mm -hmm. with the schools, to work with a lot of other community mm -hmm. agencies, to, because young people a lot of times, like myself, mm -hmm. aren't exposed to role models, people who can, are encouraging mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. to go on and continue their education, mm -hmm. to make them believe that they can actually do something other than what they see uh, uh, others mm -hmm. doing in their mm -hmm. immediate environment. Mm -hmm. And so we're really, one of the, again, the goals that we have through this coalition is getting caring adults okay. and linking them up with young people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've got some major initiatives now that we're mm -hmm. working on to mm -hmm. do that. We've got a lot of the community agencies mm -hmm. that do that. In fact, Tennessee State is one of them mm -hmm. uh, through the service learning program. We've, I've talked to Dr. Sue Fuller about mm -hmm. seeing if we, there's mm -hmm. ways that we can actually link up some of the freshmen because hey, you have service learning responsibilities mm -hmm. for all students that are mm -hmm. here at Tennessee mm -hmm. State and see if we can get link them up with mm -hmm. young people in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in as they start high school mm -hmm. and, and let them progress together. You know, you have a freshman, college freshman, who's mentoring a, a high school Super freshman and letting good. them go through this mm -hmm. process together and, mm -hmm. and talk and communicate and see mm -hmm. what that's about, what, they, what college is about, so that they develop the, not just the hope, but they can see themselves actually mm -hmm. doing it. And I mm -hmm. think that's really an important piece, mm -hmm. is that we have to provide the opportunities for young people good. to see that they can actually, you know, rise mm -hmm. above you know, they're, they're the situations, mm -hmm. that there are resources out there, and there's a lot of caring, good mm -hmm. people out there that will help them. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of what we're trying to do here mm -hmm. is, you know, through the, again, uh, call it mentoring and, and providing support mm -hmm. for young people and their families, because it really is a family, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. have to affect the whole family to help youth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really to develop some, you know, mm -hmm. these sorts of aspirations. You know, before, <coughs> before we uh, get off this, uh, uh, Doctor, let, let's uh, have you to say something in reference to um, Harry Medical College, okay. <coughs> especially dealing with uh, the area that you're involved mm -hmm. in and how mm -hmm. that area is able to uh, support uh, mm -hmm. what Meharry is, okay. is, is doing. Now. All right. Well, again, I mm -hmm. never saw myself in academic medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, you know, for me, it was just, uh, it was an opportunity that came and it arose. In fact, when I, after I graduated with my PhD, mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm through with okay. education mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm college. I didn't ever see myself being back in. Mm -hmm. But again, the opportunity really to do research mm -hmm. in this area has been just mm -hmm. very personal and rewarding because mm -hmm. it's not just an academic issue for me. Mm -hmm. It's something that I, I feel very passionate about and has provided me with an opportunity to to uh, mm -hmm. to train medical students about mm -hmm. uh, intentional injuries, mm -hmm. uh, to train our residents and family medicine, what and get them involved. What have you found to be the level of knowledge in reference to that in terms of dealing with these young mm -hmm. men, young people? In well, I, again, I don't think uh, medical students generally have any or, or very limited exposure, mm -hmm. and usually the exposure is around child abuse because there's some mandatory reporting responsibilities mm -hmm. that they have as health professionals. Mm -hmm. and, and the same with intimate partner violence. There's, mm -hmm. more, there's been more attention given to that area in recent years. But mm -hmm. in terms of youth violence, they often have no understanding mm -hmm. of what the problems are or what their role is. Mm -hmm. And so part of my responsibility is to help them understand that when they, when they see a young person, they mm -hmm. need to ask questions to, to see if, again, if they're being bullied at school to see if they're mm -hmm. being, if they're threatened on the way to school and after school. Who do they hang out with? Are there their friends in gangs or gang involved, or, or their siblings? Mm -hmm. Because if they are, it increases their risk yeah. for being, uh, getting involved mm -hmm. in activities that may lead to mm -hmm. them being mm -hmm. either a victim or a perpetrator mm -hmm. of violence. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for a medical student to be able to make that assessment, not that they're going to treat them mm -hmm. in that sense, but they can help either through counseling and, mm -hmm. and guidance mm -hmm. or through a referral to community mm -hmm. programs, and that's part of what we do mm -hmm. is help them. I, we give them a directory. We work with the Oasis Center mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, created a directory of youth services here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. It's called the 411. Mm -hmm. So we actually provide that to the students as mm -hmm. and our residents so that they have, they know that there are other uh, agencies and people out mm -hmm. there that they can refer you to who may be in need. Very good. And of course, <coughs> Dr. Warris, let me, uh, over those last uh, half minute that we have here, thank you for bringing us that excellent information by, and I'm sure that uh, those individuals who had an opportunity to hear what you had to mm -hmm. say this morning will have a new understanding and a broad understanding. Mm -hmm. I certainly have a broad understanding of this whole idea of intentional violence mm -hmm. and how we might be able to uh, affect 
uh, effectively uh, deal with it in a real mm -hmm. sense outside of the fact of uh, dealing only with gangs mm -hmm. and uh, with drugs and et cetera. Mm -hmm. and of course, we want to thank you for that. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Cummings. Thank you and good morning.